Okay, there you go. Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the Kiosk Value Working Group meeting. So maybe we have a new member here. Uh, so we start with some introduction. And let's introduce myself. I'm Vinod Ahuja. I'm a doctoral student at University of Nebraska Omaha and a regular contributor to the Kiosk project. And that's all from my side. Maybe you all introduce yourself so that we can know each other, especially to Dhru. Am I pronouncing correctly, Dhru? Yeah, yeah, it's it's perfect. Yeah, so I'm Dhru. Uh, I'm from I'm Audible. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm from Mumbai, India. I'm currently a second year student at Mumbai University, and I was uh, I was wanting to contribute to open source, and I came across this organization. I was little blown by, uh, I guess I was uh, looking through GSOC website of participating organization. I was little blown by what it does, and you know I was little curious to know what happens. So. I signed up for the mailing list and got to know that the, there are sessions and I would like love to be a part of the community. Wonderful. Welcome to the community. I'm Elizabeth, <clears throat> even though my thing says chaos community. Um, I'm Elizabeth. I'm the community manager at chaos. So we're really happy to see you and um, glad to have your opinions and voice and uh, expertise that you bring to the table here. So thank you for showing up. Um, yeah, I've been, a, I'm in the States. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we have a lot of snow right now, which we usually don't get this much. So we have about a foot of snow, 12 inches, and we just got more, we're getting more right now and more is coming Monday, like six to nine more inches. So it's too much. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm moving somewhere warm immediately, but anyway, uh, welcome. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, um, snow is really, I think snow is really beautiful, especially when it's the dry, like twinkly snow. But then in like maybe five minutes, it just becomes brown snow and it's not too beautiful anymore. <laughs> maybe I'm just overlooking it because I've lived in snow my whole life, but um, or at least in the winters. But I'm Matt um, Snell. I'm really glad to be here. I haven't, um, I'm I'm a I'm a graduate student at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, uh, in the middle of the states, and um, I just um, I I normally a diversity and inclusion or uh, badging kind of guy when it comes to the chaos project, but I want to expand my horizons, go to new meetings, uh, see what we have here, um, and I guess that's all I have. I don't have anything special to say about myself today. I guess. I need, more, I need to let the coffee set in. That's it. Okay. So, Dhruv, uh, I've posted the meeting minutes in the chat. Uh, please uh, write your name and tell how you're feeling. That's how we start everyone in the community. And then we move on to the different topics and discussions. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Okay, so the first agenda on this, any open issues, maybe, uh, can I share the screen? Elizabeth, can you give me the rights, please? Yes, one second. Uh, there you go. See the GitHub. Uh, so, if we have any issues we want to look at, I see it. Working group repository culture. I see the first a standardized working group repository structure. Uh, 
I think um, so that's one of our volunteers that's working in all of the working groups to okay. kind of keep the naming structure, the naming conventions the same across working groups, because right now it's kind of a mishmash of okay. whatever everybody felt like. So that's kind of been just being worked on by one of our volunteers. So like, are there any specific things this group should consider and like uh, look at the standardization aspect? Maybe we can take a minute and see. Yeah, there's a document there. Um, as far as like the actual work goes, I don't think we need to do that. I think our volunteers yeah. are gonna do that, but this is some good context for okay. why and where and what we're doing. Okay, okay. So then how do I hide my that top screen when I sh I'm sharing the screen? I'm unable to move the tabs. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's on the bottom now. So, okay, so here, okay. We have this, so I, so I, I guess we don't have to do anything. It will be like uh, the volunteer is going to create all the pull requests and everything. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then the next issue is project popularity, which is under review and value report. Uh, what we have in that discussion and open questions. I think if I just the funder could use to fit the mind. But yeah, what the value of community so, look like? Because we, I think we've only really done like community reports. Uh, if I, if I, I think that we've only done them on like risk or like growth maturity decline based situations, right? Um, so this is like a new perspective on the value of, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Like wh what would a community report look like that measures value in an organization or a project? That's a hard so, one. <laughs> yep. Like, uh, I don't know, Kevin is not here. Uh, this is suggested by the Kevin. So maybe like, uh, my thought is we uh, our value is not just focused on the organization aspect because it has communal aspect, it has social aspect, it has academic focus area too. So maybe we can uh, have some frameness from like what area this value report should be focused on or it should be inclusive. Yeah, um, I think ideally we could have a value report that focus that mentions like. I guess holistic is a good word for it, but like goes in from every, from the perspective of different areas. But mm -hmm. I don't know if we would be able to put that in a page or two. Um, so I think I think it's good to to kind of pick what we want to put in that. Okay, so maybe when Kevin joins, uh, then we add this and have a discussion. Like he has pointed two areas: organization focus area and academic focus area. Okay, and those are in the minutes too. Um, yes, yeah, so those are, those are also on the chat. Uh, let me share the link. Can you see this Excel doc? Yes. 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 So we have societal values, we have organizational values, we have individual values, and we have communal values. So I. Did we add academic? Yes, we have academic oh. at the bottom. Oh, we don't oh, have gotcha. any, we don't have any metrics yet, or even the proposal or any started, but we have started considering this. So if you have any idea for the academic metric, you're most than welcome to create an idea issue and then we can look at it. Right now, this was the area that was proposed as a like focus area to consider for looking at like uh, what academic value uh, we can drive from the open source projects. Like uh, software citation funding, these are the different two proposed uh, issues. That was on the list of that. Uh, where is my Okay. 
Why the waiting roads got closed? I don't know. Okay. I'm also trying to capture some of these thoughts in the meeting minutes as we go. Yes. Oh, That's thanks, Matt. Was, thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah. Okay, so and the other issues are um, do we have any other person issues? So are, are we, we should we wait then until Kevin joins us again so that he can expand yes. on that idea a little more? Okay. Yes. That's what I think like uh, to me, uh, if we just focus on the organization or academic, is it like inclusive of all the focus or we just focus on the organization of one? Like, I'm not sure. So maybe we, we can have his input on that. And okay. Okay. E performance indicator project management. Hmm. So in this issue, oh, in the project management, yes, value project organization, ROI, business financial impact, business performance measure, milestones completed. Uh, project value. So the same is posted by Kevin. Now the question is, these are very odd commercially oriented uh, KPIs. How can we think of it in terms of open source? I think that's a great question to ask Kevin. I can ask that question if you want to, you can do it. Yeah, uh, if you want, I, you can go ahead or I can just post it. Since the screen is open, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, you asked the question too. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be a larger conversation for sure, because yep. this is not pretty clear cut at all, I don't think. It but, almost sounds uh, like a question. As far as how it goes, yeah. It almost sounds like a question that a, a grant would ask <laughs> and say, figure this out. <laughs> Honestly, like, that does seem like a, a kind of extensive project to work on for sure. Hi, Matt G. So is it okay or any other thoughts on this? Yeah, just to, just to let you know, Matt, uh, Kevin has proposed this like project management discipline KPIs to look as a metric. What okay. we were dis what we were discussing was like these are very uh, commercial, I feel like these are very commercially oriented. How can we situate them in an open source context? That's what we are trying to get the thoughts from Kevin. If you have okay. any thoughts or any suggestions. So we've, um, I'd have to kind of get my head back into the KPI. We've had discussions around KPIs before in chaos. Um, I don't remember right off the top of my head, uh, but I don't. I don't think a KPI is not a metric by itself, is it? It can be. Like, uh, for example, if you look at though ROI is difficult, but in commercial terms, it is a key metric for the organization. But the KPI is a combination of indicators. Like, it's yes. a, it is a yes. key performance indicator. It whatever it might be. Yes, you but like uh, this can be an atomic metric, and the combination of them, all of the combination of all of these, can form a like a set of a KPI for a company. Or yes, so each one of those, like the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, would be yeah. would and be atomic. metrics themselves. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. So are you, what are you asking me then? 
So I'm asking from Kevin is like, these are commercially focused. How do we situate these in open source context? Um, from, even from an organizational perspective. Well, I'm wondering if we need to. So, so we have the, if you take a look at the metric spreadsheet, we mean we have on row 27, we have organizational value. So, I mean, we can build metrics that are just like directly aimed at organizations, which is like the cover word for company, I suppose, <laughs> you know? But yeah. but the, the question I have is then, okay, uh, like are we building any or metric or we are more focused on like organizations participation in open source and how they value that participation or that uh, engagement in open source in terms of metric. Like, a commercial organization can have so many different metrics they use internally for commercial purposes. But well, situating them in open source context, how do what kind of metrics they are looking at is what I'm perceiving from this uh, focus area. Well, I, I understand that organization of value, like it says monetarily in the description there, that it comes down to uh, a money value at the end um, when it comes to how they how the organization, um, the project is useful to the organization because that's a good measurement. Uh, and we, 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 a lot of these metrics though that have been proposed for this, uh, the KPIs are seem internal um, and not necessarily something you can even really be transparent about, which is, I think I share that concern too. I see. So that there's something that you would only be able to deploy like from an inner source perspective yeah. It's difficult. Yeah, and, yeah, when we like intersource, it, I think it's completely within the the bounds of asking questions with respect to the health of communities. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is what Daniel does a lot with the intersource commons work. Um but I don't know if we've ever really developed metrics that are inner source focused at this point. Yeah, that that's a good thing to add to um, yeah. that issue. Then, uh, like, do we want to do we want to give people metrics for their internal use for their internal benefit, basically? Uh, and, and it's hard because like a lot of our stuff has been focused on transparency and openness. And so it's just I'm not against it. I just is that our mission, you know? Yeah, and I I think. Um, like I've never done inner source work. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, have you? Yeah. Not not formally. Yeah, I mean, I like it makes sense, but I've never like spent the time to really take a look at what it might be. So I, I'd be really hesitant to pr propose metrics that are inner source focused when I'm not super comfortable <laughs> with them myself. What if we had someone that had an inner source, inner source perspective advising on these metrics or something like that? I was going to say, maybe we could bring it up at the next Asia Pacific call, because that seems to be a pretty popular topic in that call. So maybe we could um, show them this issue and ask yeah. for their opinions. Just yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. I can add, I'll put this in the minutes. Can somebody uh, put I was just about to. No, go ahead. I, less work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to add him to the Asia Pacific call, Matt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll just put so, a link to that issue in the value. Yeah, yeah, that'd be perfect. So uh, what I'm like uh, wondering on the organization value aspect is like any organizational value metric will be internal to the organization. Probably whether, so. Probably so. So if we are developing any metric, whether they are using it or not, it'll be internal to them. So it is, I think, highly related to the inner source rather than like we thinking as like, okay, organization will view it as this. So I'm looking, 
Oh, all our chaos meetings are at mailman time. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, even if I look at organizational value too, I think if I look at rows like these, uh, like all these, thirty-one. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, saw where I highlighted it. Yes. Oh. Um, 31 through 35, are those now filters in labor investment anyway? Yes. Yes. I mean, to me, we should get rid of these as considering as metrics then. Yep. That's what I guess. So maybe we take a look at, no, this is the revenue. Not we that have one. Any, yeah. We don't have any met, uh, like dog for this labor cost by organization. Well, because I think it's in row 28. See the released metric? Uh, revenue, row 28. Oh, okay, this one. Labor investment has been released. And as far as I can tell, 31 through 35 are filters in labor investment. See what I'm saying? Yes. I'm just trying to like uh, get an idea what is in the labor investment so that we can uh, so do we do a search on um commits uh here is the labor investment but go down to filters filters internal versus internal external contributor issue takes and project sources internal open source repos competitors open source repos that first block of items there, I think, are the ones that were originally going to be metrics. That this labor investment as, as a, labor investment too. So their objectives, not filters. But in the spreadsheet, it calls them filters. Yeah, I think we have to revisit this labor investment as a as a metric because from this description, it seems like need some refinement mm, yeah and this is a pretty old metric to be honest with you this was yes. one that came like <laughs> this is like the third instantiation of this working group so <laughs> yes um so why let's see labor investment so in the spreadsheet, it says that revenue tie, oh, no, I'm sorry, labor cost by organization is now a filter in this metric that you're showing us. Okay. And that doesn't seem to be the case. Yes. So I think we should spend a little time cleaning this up. Yes, so maybe we create a doc and then uh move this metric and then revise it again probably so okay so for the next meeting then i'll create a doc and move this existing metric over there and we can refine it and then and i think we can refine it in accord to rows 30 whatever one through 35 to try to okay. account for those as filters right and then we can get rid of them on this spreadsheet okay. And then, yeah. Uh, okay. I'll add to the meeting. I just got you an action item for that. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Yep. Okay. Okay. So. I so think I think the good. the action item is basically just clean up labor investment yeah. to to include these filters. Right. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So then we have uh, organization value we covered. This. Now one metric in the organization value, which is still like uh, half developed, I guess maybe a time to look at that is share of voice. Yes. Uh, 
I don't know where my chat is hiding when I share the screen. <laughs> so the question, if a supporting business values a share of voice metric, how can the value of a community be expressed in these terms? Okay, this makes sense. How is it different from the project popularity? So I think this is project popularity is just that, like how popular a project is. Right. As determined by stars or forks or whatever. Right. You know, however, however that comes to be. The share of voice, I think, is if I was to take a look at, say, like auto grade Linux. And I want to get an understanding of how my organization is um, influencing and having an impact on that community. Okay. See what I'm saying? So, so like from an organizational perspective, you know, like one of the strategic goals is to drive the open source community to be aligned with your internal practices, right? And so the closer right. you can keep these things aligned, the better for your company. So it's just, it's just super simple. Um, okay. And then I think share of voice is just, it's a nice way of saying, you know, basically how, how much strategic influence do I have? Yeah, like how I'm directing the entire work in the community. Yeah. That's how I read this. So like when I, if you give the metric up, yeah. So like, if I look at yeah. that comment right there, like how influential am I in a space? Right. And just to be clear, this is for open source projects that are not quote unquote owned by a company. Probably but one so. one that just yeah. contributes back to it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even in the, even in the Kubernetes space, right. That was owned by Google back in the day. Um, companies may still want to reflect on their ability to influence particular parts. I mean, Kubernetes is so big anymore, but influence particular parts of the development of Kubernetes and Kubernetes related things. So for example, SAP may want to understand how they're influencing Kubernetes. Red Hat may want to understand how they're influencing Kubernetes. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we can spend 10 minutes and go through this one. Yeah, that's fine. I'm already on it. <laughs> okay. So now you only have to spend nine minutes or eight minutes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Just to start here, I find the implementation to be incredibly confusing. <laughs> I, that might just be I my, um, yeah. yeah.
So is anybody struggling a little bit with influence? So there's, there's one way to think about influence, which is how a company can influence a particular project. That's one influence. The second influence that I read in this sometimes is the influence of a project within an ecosystem. Right. That's what I was uh, un like understanding from share of voice is like, if there are a bunch of communities, how one particular, uh, uh, if there are a bunch of organization or individuals in a community, how one particular uh, individual or organization is influencing the community's direction. I think, and like it, you can see in the in the second paragraph here, I, I've removed a bunch of alternatives. I think we need to focus on one um, kind of um, thing that we're measuring. I guess if we want to measure community versus an organization or visibility versus influence, we need we probably need to pick one, don't we? A hundred percent, because I think we'll get into confounding issues if we're like yeah. at one point talking about organizational influence and then at another point talking about community influence that doesn't help mm. so I, I just completely removed product and project and i would just want to focus on like community versus community really so um, you want to focus on the influence that a community has on a particular market yeah so that I think will come in social or because share of voice is from organizational perspective, like which organization is influencing. We can have it share of voice from a individual perspective, from a community, from a project perspective. Elizabeth or I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name. Drew? Ruv? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Okay, hopefully I got that right. Thanks for joining, by the way. Um, do, do it. Any, do either of you have a thought on this? Uh, no, I think uh, if I don't give a thought, cause I'm not aware of the complete context of everything. So I think I'll just, I'm trying to, yeah. No problem. Keep joining and then you'll gain context, yeah. which is awesome. Twice. That That's the plan. I'm really excited to. Right on. Yeah, yeah I kind of uh, agree with Vinod that this is coming more from an organizational. So the way I interpret it is, is that uh, if someone um, at an organization wants to know if it's worth allowing their employees to contribute to open source on company time, then this would be a metric that they would care about because it seems like almost back to those KPIs, almost the return on investment. Like we, ha you know, our company now has a, has, um, you know, say in how this community drives this project, even though we don't own it, like we're, we're influential in this space. So that's a good thing for our company because A, B, C, D. So that, that's where I assume, or that's kind of how I interpret this, this metric, but that could be totally not what the original author was intending. You know, share, share a voice sounds so positive and organizational influence sounds like they, they seem, <laughs> they seem different to me. I am having yeah. a hard time reconciling those. So, so maybe instead of influence, we can say, uh, contribute or direct or support uh like i, I see that uh, well, I where think, you are getting i think influ i mean like let's be real clear like in 2021 organizational influence over open source communities is is, a is thing. some it, it's a thing and it's yes. it's, a, it's an openly talked about thing um i don't know that we need to shy away from it and yeah. sometimes we've talked about this too in other metrics, like if we kind of skirt around what we're trying to talk about, people will look at the metric and say, what are they talking about? <laughs> like, what? And yeah, if we just have a, yeah. I think we run into, also we run into the, um, the aspect of share of voice sounds like almost like a diversity, equity and inclusion kind of focus or something about like, 
having a say, uh, advocacy, things like that is what pops into my head. Maybe it's just because I'm DEI focused, but. Um, no, it, it does to me too. Like I wanna help ensure that um, a community has, provides share of uh, all voices to be heard, basically is how I right. kind of re read that. Um, which is way different than organizational influence over a community. I'm also struggling with like, how do you actually measure that? You know, like there's a formula right there, but, but like, how, was, how do you measure I was that? thinking, so um, you can actually take a look at who is a, a listed maintainer within a community. You could see maybe organizationally who's merging PRs so activity based would yeah equal. yeah some like if if i looked at a community and i saw that like the board of directors had you know 30 percent of the folks were from red hat and red hat merged a red hat employee merged 80 percent of all prs in the project i might assume that red hat has a for better or for worse, um, pretty good influence over the project. I I like that. I like that as a concrete way to tie activity to this this level of influence. Don't forget. I think we've <clears throat> moved to merge requests at this point. Nitpick. <laughs> you knew what I was talking about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, I can look at, say, auto grade Linux and just take a look at who's on the board, who are the gold, silver, and platinum members, and get at least at least a starter idea. An interesting one too is um, with events. I'm, I've gotten the event, event headspace, but um, seeing who is sh showing up and sponsoring events. Or uh, that might even be a new metric, but um, people who are more involved in the event space have a lot more um, like re reserved in my head for like, oh, these, these companies support this thing. That might be a whole new idea though. I really like that idea. And it kind of, in my mind anyway, flips the, the, the narrative to more of like less of an evil <laughs> like we want to influence you but more of like we want to support you and in doing so then we kind of get this benefit to ourselves as like yeah we're influencing you but it's all about us supporting open source not taking over open source which i like that narrative better <laughs> just personally i know <laughs> right there's the narrative that is maybe the true narrative and the narrative that is one that we <laughs> represent in the metrics <laughs> Um, so maybe instead of organizational influence, maybe organizational support would be another word that you just mentioned, Elizabeth. Or engagement, maybe. That's a good word. Great. So we don't want organizational control. So how, and maybe down like then in the description and objectives, we could talk about some of this could be with respect to strategic influence. Some of this could be with respect to just supporting a broad community. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that you could take this then. Yeah, and it might even be, you know, this could even tie into a little bit with with risk in that, you know, if a company is in, engaged and, and supporting and active with a project, then they have a a better handle on what's happening in the project. They can support it and make sure that it continues to, um, you know, be maintained and things like that. So it's it. There are benefits for obviously for organizations to be involved. So I don't know if we want to like lump all of that into this one metric, but um, there are you know there are reasons why why a, an organization would care about an open source project and why they'd want to be involved. Agreed. So let's okay. So I'm gonna or share a voice, it's like going away. Okay. 
what's not a measure of brand ownership is a measure of um i i would ownership. say I would say we keep the share of voice uh, dash organizational engagement because we are focused on the share of voice, not just organizational engagement. Because if we if we rename it as an organizational engagement, engagement can be like in different forms. And are we measuring the influence or the engagement? Impact. That's my word. Oh, yeah. Share of voice. Uh, I was thinking word. of share of voice as an organizational impact. Uh, that that is a good. Yeah, I like that too. Yes. So I think we may need an action item to look over these. This whole document. We got a lot to talk about here. No, no, we're gonna fix time. it. We're gonna get it in four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> My, my only maybe is a thing to think about um, is like the metrics should just say what it means. So if it's organizational in, impact dash share of voice, that that could get a little, it's just, you're saying two things and maybe yeah. they're together. And it's all about kind of representing the metric to other folks. And um, you go ahead. Now, what I was suggesting is uh, organizational share of voice. Because uh, this terminology is very much share of voice in the like organ the corporate world. So maybe organizational share of voice represents that thing. Shared impact. I think share of voice still has uh, is kind of a loaded term in terms of like meaning other things. I like impact. I just like organizational impact. We could like uh, the trick that we talked about in writing. We could go to share of voice like in the description. You know, talk about why this is important. Right. Um, but from a value perspective, organizational impact makes a ton of sense to me. Yes. I would agree to that. All right. Well, maybe in the two minutes, mm -hmm. maybe we should we come back to this one next meeting? Well, we could maybe give, Yeah. we can always give an action item, whether or not it can gets done um, it's another story but I mean you can give me the action item to try to clean some of this up okay per Matt's suggestion Okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> I assigned it to myself on accident. It, Matt and G somehow turned into me. <laughs> I, 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 wait, I, I was just thinking you're, you're, when you change last name, it's going to be a C, right? Yeah, um, if to anybody who doesn't know, I'm taking Michaela's last name in May, so I'm going to be in Matt can too. Nice, that's awesome. There you go. Something I learned just recently is that if you want to assign something to someone manually, you add a comment and you add their email, and then it, it gives you the, the option to assign them. I, I did not know that until like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. How do I assign it? Should I yeah. just make a comment? It's nice because the person gets an email that says they have to do it. Yeah. And then I immediately archive the email. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> in okay. in the interest of time, we are at the end of our and once I stopped sharing, I got my chat back. I was trying to figure out where is my chat. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you for yeah, your and, time. And uh, Daruv, join us. Please continue to join us. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thanks. It was a really great session. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you. Everybody. All right, everybody. Thank you. See you. See you everyone See you. later. Bye. Bye. Bye.